And um, I'm sure I was uh, talking to many people in the lunch break, and I believe everybody told me this is a really impressive speakers what we have heard in the morning and it was fascinating it was a huge learning process for most of us many of us and um, uh, everybody is uh, really thrilled and overwhelmed with our speaker line and I can assure you it's it's uh, the afternoon is the same way we have amazing speakers waiting for us um, many of you joined us later and they wanted to know um, who am I I just want to um, all of you to know that my name is Dithiti Bhomik. I work for McCarthy Tetro. I run the vendor management, project management, facilities management, and our office services. And uh, we, um, as Tracy Crook mentioned in the morning, that we actually opened our first office with a hybrid workspace where the lawyers and associates are working in an open environment and collaborative and very innovative environment in Quebec City. And um, we will be doing the same in Vancouver where we're moving in the March, April timeframe. I do want to invite all of you in our Quebec City location, if you are happen to be there in Montreal or Quebec City, just let us know. We will happy to give you a tour as well as in Vancouver after April. So that will be really a pleasure for us uh, if we can show you our new premises. Um, right now, I do want to introduce uh, one gentleman and one amazing woman who are working in this space. Ian Marley is a co-founder of Seraview, and I was uh, fortunate to sit beside him and uh, having lunch with him. And um, he, he built this company 10 years ago in Australia. And with his success in, in, in Australia, then he moved to North America right now, having an office in New York. And uh, the Seraview, it's a facilities management software he built. And, um, you know, just last week, they actually got an award for the best facilities management software as well. So it's, it's very interesting to know more about this. So he worked with Nada Farah, which, who is our uh, senior manager for the workplace strategy in Bank of Montreal. As you know, it's our top five banks in Canada, an amazing workspace uh, place to work, um, work for. And Nada and Hien will tell us their story that what they have done with their workplace strategy in Bank of Montreal. So I do want to invite both of them on the stage. Thank you. Okay, so it's right after lunch. I'm gonna apologize for two reasons. One is because it is after lunch, and hopefully if I do blunder, most of you will forgive me. And then second, um, I'm gonna bring you back to earth. It's been awesome for this morning's conversations. Everybody brought us up to this level. I'm gonna talk to you about occupancy. And I think, un not surprisingly, you will all hopefully have, um, will be facing almost similar issues that we faced once we got um, started our journey with Serview. Um, so we manage about four million, just to give you an idea of what we do, what my team and I do um, at BMO. Uh, we manage about four million square feet of space across Canada. That covers 22 buildings, um, about 23,000 workstations occupied by about 20,000 employees. And that's only our main occupancy buildings. That does not include all of the standalones or the branches. So our focus is on the office space. Um, not surprisingly, over the last, I'd say, four to five years, BMO has been dabbling and trying to transform the organization. We have tried B-Mobility for about five years, a form of flexible space. Um, we are trying to become more efficient and denser. Yes, Philip, we are talking about density. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> um, but we're also trying to change the way people work. And it's hard to actually do that with the data that we usually have. Um, so what we've discovered, and I apologize, I'm gonna eventually learn how to do this. So what we've discovered is we're being asked to actually make a lot of big strategies, a lot of big decisions, when we actually have um, very little good data. Our data is outdated, very inefficient. 
Um, a lot of times it actually takes us a lot of time to gather the data. Um, we have a lack of transparency on occupancy and on utilization. I believe that definitely isn't surprising for anyone. Um, and then we also have very, I'd say inefficient use of our existing space. A lot of our occupants usually say, I have 2% vacancy, I'm actually below the 2% vacancy, I have no space, I am growing, I need you to give me more space. A lot of times it used to deal, lead us to increasing our footprint. Um, so why focus on occupancy? It, does anyone see, is this, is this new to anyone? This is basically how we manage our occupancy. It is one floor plan shared by three different groups and that used to be the extent of what we knew. Um, real estate cost is visible to all of us. To most of us, it's about the third highest cost. So when they ask us to actually shrink our footprint so that they, we could reduce cost, we're doing it with almost no data. Um, the request came to us when we first started looking at occupancy from a line of business who wanted to manage their space. And that's all that we could give them. We can give them bums and seats. We can give them where, they, where everybody used to sit. We couldn't even give them what vacancy they had in their space. Um, what we found interesting, and in about three years ago, I was part of a group that did data collection for a large strategy for one of our line of businesses. It took three people, three months, to gather the data about who sits where, how much was allocated, how much was occupied, what was the vacancy, and how much it costed the bank in vacancy. And we knew that was, it kept changing on a day-to-day -day basis, so we did, a, we draw a line in the set and said, okay, as of April of this year, this is the actual occupancy and this is the actual utilization. Well, three months later, when we presented to the executives, they all said, oh, that can't be true. That's not our data. That data is outdated, which we knew. It was three months old. But not surprising, that's all we could do. And it was very expensive, you think about it. If I have to do this job every quarter, it'll take three people for three months to gather the data that gets pretty damn obsolete fairly quickly. Excuse the language. <laughs> so here's what we tried to go towards. Now we know who sits where, the teams that are occupying the space, the vacancy on the space. If you see the little white dots, it tells me I have probably about 10 seats that are vacant on this space. This floor is actually fairly well utilized, and that's what we want to see. There are other floors where we had about 40 empty seats, and the first time we actually showed the space to our, one of our executives, she said, no way. I go, yep, and it's been vacant for about six months now. No way. So we walked the space with one of the reps. We actually highlighted every single occupancy because she did not believe what she saw on the floor plan. And the initial reaction goes, really? I have 40 empty desks. And then the second conversation was, can we actually try to make use of those desks for somebody else? I don't think it's surprising for anybody that reaction came back. Who's like, oh, no, 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 no. 20 of those are actually TBDs. Those 20 TBDs were 20 TBDs for the next, next six months. But now we actually have a tool that allows us to say, you've had those 20 TBDs for six months. Are they really coming on board? It changes the conversation. And then we could do even more. We could actually say, here's who sits where. It's a lot, it's a bums and seats. It actually tells you who occupies the space. It creates visibility to individual seating. You get detailed um, data that enables um, decision making. So what is occupancy and what does it do for us? It's a key enabler. Um, it provides us clarity on occupancy. It helps us better understand what the business needs and how we can support them. It gives us a tool to actually better manage our space highlights and minimizes hogging behavior. In the past, we used to have executives who had three different offices and three different business buildings. We did not know that. 
We also had people who were set up in three different buildings. So here's one individual with three workstations times 20 times 30 times 22 buildings. You can get an idea of how we are now efficiently using our space. The tool is itself provides you with the, with the right, sorry, the technology provides you with the tool to actually have the right technology, the right discussion. It gives you clarity on what you have and what you don't have. Um, eventually, what we were able to do is avo avoid long-term long -term rent increases. Because in the past, when they came and they said, I'm out of space, the first reaction we have is, we'll rent more space. And we will rent more space for the next 10 years. And all of a sudden, we have space that could be lying vacant for the next 10 years because we had some space in our existing occupancy, but we didn't have the tool to give us that, um, that information. So why Cerevue, you ask? Our, we were asked to actually focus, and we needed to focus on occupancy. We had tools for all of our other needs. Leasing had a tool. Finance had a tool. We did not have a tool that actually tells us um, where people sat, where our vacancies are. Um, and we also did not want to bring in a tool, we, a, a CAFM system, that would cover everything. Because in general, from experience, it's, a very, it's, it's much harder to actually um, implement such a tool. So our focus was definitely to say, and it was a targeted focus to actually say, I want to only look at occupancy. Here's what Sarah View did for us. Um, one, it allows us to actually put the onus on the lines of businesses to manage their space. So the yellow bee um, became a part owner and an accountable for their data. It wasn't up to us to input the data because, not surprising, the moment you put their own data, they'll tell you it's not true. Once they put their data, you can say your own people put your data. If you think it's wrong, you may want to have that conversation with them to actually validate your information better. When someone asks us for our four plans, it became much easier for us to also give them access to, this, to the tool. And now they can, bring, they, they can do the report on their own. They can see bums and seats. Um, we don't have to be involved. The tool itself is fairly intuitive. It's easy to use. Um, we were able to deploy it fairly well and fairly quickly. Um, what we liked about the tool is also modular. So as we wanted to add more modules, you could do that. Um, so here's what was interesting about Cerevue is we've started to use Cerevue for more. We now have our mailroom folks getting access to Cerevue because once they have, we have a move, they can actually access it without us having to be in the middle of the discussion. Um, our technology folks who are doing a lot of changes now have our floor plans and can see. So we're implementing Wi-Fi and it allows them to actually see if people are complaining, where are they sitting and which Wi-Fi system isn't working properly. What's even more interesting is we have become the book of record for occupancy, not our HR system because the HR system relies on the managers to update the information. Most of the time, I'd say about 90% of the time, the managers don't do that on a timely basis. So without further ado, I'm gonna actually leave it to Ian to give you a quick um, demonstration of Cerevue, and then I'll be right back. Thank you, Nada. It's uh, definitely great to uh, be here today in uh, what kind of seems like the great Aussie invasion of Canada. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. Um, but uh, it was really interest interesting to see uh, so much reference to Australia and Bill's talk in particular about all the great work the National Australia Bank and all the banks have done down in Australia. Um, the NAB is actually where we started life 10 years ago working alongside um, Rosemary Kirkby as she was designing that new space. And uh, we were working down the hallway from them and they said, hey, we need some systems to automate everything that we're doing, provide us with the data that we need to make better decisions, drive the cultural change that's going on. Um, so we built the first tool for, for NAB, and then all of the uh, Australian banks have been using our tool for most of the last decade. Um, we've now been in New York for, for two years, and really happy to be bringing all those innovations over here. Really quickly, I just wanted to show you um, a tiny flavour of, of what we do. Um, what we've been doing for Bank of Montreal in particular. 
the first thing we do with any client is grab all of your floor plans. Whether it's CAD based or PDF or sketches on the back of a napkin, we can import them all into the tool and polyline them uh, really efficiently so that you can see what types of space you've got throughout your portfolio. Very quickly, you can highlight different, different desks and see who sits where. The block and stack tool is the heart of our tool. So here you're seeing 100 Broadway, a 12-story building. You can see all the lines of business who occupy space on the floor. I can highlight the retail products group and see that they've got 18 uh, desks assigned to them. Or I can even drill down on my organisation hierarchy to any level. So what does the stack look like at level two of my hierarchy or level three? If I'm going to have a conversation with someone who's deep down in my business, I can quickly highlight their space and run some reports for it. Maybe I want to see where finance are all throughout the GTA. Quickly highlight finance in the block and stack, run a report, and you'll see there they are. Here's a stack of the three buildings in GTA and exactly where finance have their space. Take that to your line manager and have a conversation about how well the space is being used. At some point, finance will want some more space. Come back into the block and stack, grab your paintbrush and paint on the new seats that you're assigning to them. Or if you want to assign some specific occupants, drag them from the list and drop them on specific desks. Bang, I've just done an update of my occupancy and block and stack. It really should be that simple. But let me show you where the real magic happens. This is what if scenario planning. The block and stack shows you the way the current space is assigned. Let's now look out four, six months in the future and see how it could be stacked. Let's bring up a project, open up 100 Broadway. Here's the way it's currently stacked. I want to right size all of my space allocations based on utilization. Bang, all that white space there is now vacant and freed up. Next thing I want to do is align all of my business units to take advantage of business adjacencies. Let's just drag and drop them. Grab the blue global functions groups and bring them all together. Uh, the green folks, let's align them. There's a few spaces down on the bottom there, so I'll pull the blue, blue folks down there, keep going. A few more little things, bring those guys down. Looks like I've overstacked level 10. Uh, let's take a few people off level 10, do a few more tidy ups, and voila. In 30 seconds, I've just cleared a floor and a half. Saved my biz business over a million dollars a year in ongoing real estate costs. It was just that simple. This is just a glimpse at what we can do with the space planning tools. Um, please do come over and uh, have a look. Uh, we do space planning. We also bring in utilization data from sensors. We've got tailor-made uh, business intelligence reports, dashboards, heat maps to show you utilization of space and what state spaces are being used as well as wayfinding tools to enable the next generation of workplaces. And on that note, I'd like to hand back over to Nada. Thanks again. So where are we today? I would like to emphasize that CeraView is a tool. It's what you do with the tool that really matter. It will not take away the discussions. It will actually improve the discussions because it gives you the right data to do those discussions properly. Um, what we've realized after a year, we started pretty much November, early December of last year, so it's exactly a year. It's a journey, and it has just started. Um, we have realized that we, are not, we now know a lot more about our, our data. We have more clarity. We can do more by stacking the groups together. For instance, can I actually now create that 10% vacancy that I'm looking for when I, before I thought I was actually below the 2% vacancy? Can I look at a floor and if there are 20 vacancies, can we now restack and say, here's now 20 seats that are contiguous and I can offer it for another team? It changes the discussion in the sense that instead of a team coming to me and saying I need more space, I can turn around and I look at the space and I say, you may no longer have space, but the group next to you has six seats. In the short term, we can make use of those seats. So it's changed the way we handle our occupancy. Um, 
what what has become interesting is that at one point someone earlier today said about sharing the space today we have people thinking the space is their own what we're trying to do is actually saying the space is BMO's space you are using the space and if there's some contiguous space that's available for someone else to someone else to make use of we should be able to do that and oh by the way i have some more space on the two floors up it's just a short elevator if you need more space we will give it to you it's changed the conversation in the sense that we now know that if i take away some space from them i can give it somewhere else lessons learned so It was good for us to actually do a focused approach, to only look at occupancy and not look to try to solve every single problem that real estate may or may not have. It gave us the opportunity to, to clean up our data significantly. Um, I would say about a year ago, we had maybe 50% um, knowledge of where people were. We're probably closer to about 75%. There is some more room to improve. Um, as I said, it's a journey, trying to actually work with the lines of businesses to validate their data properly. You sometimes stumble on um, mistakes that they have done um, because they just want to do this quickly and they say, click, I validated my space, but actually, so 30 people are no longer in that space. So what looks like it should have been vacant space, it look, today looks like it's occupied. And you can go back and you say, I think you can validate this again. <laughs> These folks moved about two weeks ago. Um, so what we did really well was to actually train our stakeholders all the time and give them the tools to actually do what they can do and they need to do. We try to actually have them um, included in their um, onboarding and offboarding. Some groups are much more successful than others. I'll give you an example. The groups that, I ha that have included it in their uh, onboarding and offboarding process have done much better. We have less problems. The groups, and we have a large group that has resisted actually um, including it in their occupancy, in their onboarding and offboarding, hasn't done so well. And we can now highlight that fact. Hey, we've been encouraging you to do this and to include this in your onboarding, offboarding process. You've resisted. And every time we need to collect data from you, the data is actually inaccurate. It changes the discussion you have with your lines of businesses. Using the tool, and again, I, I would say that because we have now the data, our own data, so the org chart is in Serview, the, our enterprise directory is in Serview. People can't just job, mojo coming off the street and say, oh, this, this floor is occupied. Because if they don't find it in Serview, means it's not in the enterprise directory. And we upload our data on a weekly basis. So they can't come back and tell me, this person is coming on board well. This person should have been on board a week ago. And if it's not in our enterprise directory, that person is probably not at BMO. And it also allows us to go back to HR and say, there's a glitch in the system. Can we fix it? So it's a journey. We're getting there. Um, I would say the journey has allowed us to discover what the technology can do for us. It helps us understand our data, but it also helped us understand where our processes aren't working or where we don't have any processes that we need to put in place. So we're doing better, a little bit better, about 70% better, <laughs> but not 100%. Um, what's for 2016? Uh, we need to further enhance the data and our processes, as I said. Uh, we're working on what we would call what Serview has as a module, the relocation module. It allows us to basically move people and using the data in Serview. Um, so the scenario planning becomes embedded into a move um, module that allows us to do everything through Serview. So when people move, I don't need them to actually tell me where they moved. It automatically is updated through the system. We're expanding into the US, um, and that starts January 1st. We're going to start doing a lot more utilization analysis. Today, we have occupancy. I know that I have bums in seats. What I don't know, are they using those seats? And eventually, that's where we need to go. So if, in order for us to do flexibility, in order for us to think about workplace transformation, in order for us to actually look at what can we do in the future 
can we now verify to the lines of businesses that 60% of your employees are usually on a daily basis at work. About 40% of your space is vacant. We have capacity within our space to actually do what we need to do. We just need to now sell it to them, but we have the tool and the data to actually sell it to them better. Eventually, 2017, Ian, I'm jumping to 2017. <laughs> We're looking at wayfinding. Can we actually now find people a lot easier? Can we um, have sensor technology? Finding people in our space without having to rely whether or not they sat at the desk. Um, I would like to know true utilization of the space versus just an occupancy. And that's it for me. Thank you. I want to thank Nara and Yen for uh, the presentation. I would like to open uh, right now the floor for any questions for any one of them. Yes, please. Thank you. Uh, Kevin Haverty with uh, JLL. It was mentioned by both of you that um, you can move people around quite easily. I thought it was quite amazing how you could repopulate and see how space was absorbed and how you could save space, et cetera. Uh, it was mentioned by you, I believe, Nada, that BMO owns the space, and so you're effectively telling different departments, you know, that's our space, we can better utilize it. Yes. Are you actually charging your user groups within the bank for the space, or does that stay on sort of a main account? And tying into Ian, does Sarah View tie into a finance system so you can do a facility cost allocation? So Ian, if you want, I can actually answer both those questions. Sure. <laughs> um, today we do, um, and we also break it out as per the first floor plan, how much each person, each group is using um, on our occupancy, on our, every floor. Ideally in the future, we should own the space and we should pay for the space because it allows us to govern the space. That's Nirvana. That's where we would all like to be because the moment you tell them this is how much you're paying for the space, they own the space. They think they own the space. Um, with regards to what Servi is doing uh, for us for the um, allocation, we're actually, what we've done in, at BMO is we created two instances in Servi. One instance is for the utilization and the occupancy of the space, and another instance is to actually do what we would call our recharge model and our occupancy. So um, the team could actually toggle between the two views so that they can see how much is everybody paying for the space and then they can see how much the occupancy. And the two um, instances talk to each other. So I can actually look at how much they're paying and overlay the actual occupancy of the space and give them a cost of their vacancy. That's in progress and that's in 2016. So we're working on this at the moment. <laughs>